from the oldest city in the USA, St. Augustine tonight, with our guest, Amy Golden, Yvette Monell, Bob Blaine, musical guest Caribe Groove, and comic relief by Morgan Gallo. With your host, Jorge Rivera. We're alive, and we're here. And um, I first want to thank all the people. You know, this show is my idea, but it doesn't happen with tons of people who contribute. Uh, the, the classic theater, uh, this is their space. They've been helping us. Uh, uh, Norman uh, built these for us to put our banner. It looks lovely. And Tom did a great thing lighting it up. Uh, we have um, all, all kinds of people. The, the Lincolnville Museum Cultural Center. Uh, Always so supportive, always so great. Shirley, Flowers by Shirley, look at that. For every show, they're going to bring us something special. If you're drinking beer, it was the ancient city brewery who said, we want to be part of the show, so the suds are on us. So they're, they're bringing the suds so that every dollar that you buy beer goes to the museum. You know, th this show doesn't make any money, <laughs> so, so um, it, it's sad, but it, it, it's a reality. Um, I want to start with one of my biggest, biggest fans uh, was someone by the name of Katarina Bon Peretti. And the last time I saw her, I saw her in a, in a gala, was wearing a tuxedo. She looked lovely herself, and she walked up to me and says, I can't wait for the show, man. I, I'm getting the season tickets. I'm ready to go. Come on, let's get that show going. And I said, yeah, it's coming in January. Sadly, a week later, she passed. Um, she, so, something went terribly wrong. They took her to Flagler. It went worse, and, and we lost her. She had buried her husband that year also. So it was really tragic. So she's here with us tonight. I know Katarina's here. Also, um, we had a guest that was coming here on the last show, uh, Marty Lewis. Maybe some of you know Marty. Marty's the guy who runs the film office. So he, um, he makes sure that anyone who comes to shoot films and documentaries in the city, well, they have to go through his office to know what, you know, what are the legal things, what they can do, what papers to sign, et cetera, et cetera. Marty died on his sleep January 2nd. He was, he was struggling with, uh, uh, oh, we didn't pay the light bill. Hey, no, no, I'm still here. I still got those. But, but what happened was he was in stage four cancer, and he, he died uh, in his sleep, which is a wonderful way to go if you got to go. And uh, what I love it is that we did a pre-interview, and I have Marty talking about his life for an hour and a half, and I'm going to give that to his wife. So she still can hear Marty talking about his life. So I'm burning that down. So Marty's here. Marty's a guest tonight. Marty's a guest tonight. I, I also, I also want to thank the St. John's Cultural Council. They've been awesome, awesome. We have a new director, and she is just shaking this town, man. Uh, Christina Parrish Stone is just crushing it here, and we're so lucky to have her. She wanted to be on the show tonight, but her son had a soccer tournament. He's senior. That was very important. So we'll have someone uh, talking about the St. John's Cultural Council later. Another thing I, I wanted to talk about is, you know, um, it is Lee Weaver. A lot of you know Lee. Yeah. Lee. Lee has a challenge of throat cancer right now. Yeah. It's only stage one. It's doing a radiation. He's going to do stand up on one of the shows. So Lee's come, Lee ain't going anywhere. <laughs> we have a saying in Puerto Rico it says, a bad, bad weed never dies. <laughs> um, so, so he's one of those, okay? And also, uh, Cheryl Lutke is watching. She also has some serious health issues. I know she'll see the show once it goes online. So wave to you, Cheryl, and send prayers your way. So yeah, I want to remember those people. It's been two rough years, man. Really rough. <laughs> I, I, I could go anywhere with that. 
But you know, one thing that we've seen, electric cars. We've seen electric cars everywhere. I've seen these Teslas pull up. A Porsche Taycan went down my street the other day. I just, with a little chihuahua I walked, we both looked and said, <laughs> it's coming. The revolution is coming. And this year, there are going to be so many more cars going out there. The James Webb Telescope unfolded. Let's give it a hand. <laughs> I was so worried about that because, you know, it takes like 41, it's like an origami, and it has to work perfect. And you know, a million miles away is a long way to send the Maytag man. <laughs> so it has to work. And so it's going there. We're going to see things that we've never seen and probably things we should not. So, so let's cross our fingers on that. Also, another thing I read in the news that was very turtles. These, the, a lot of them were endangered species. They're on the coast of Texas. They found them up in Boston. I mean, how bad is Texas? <laughs> I mean, and then the poor turtles were put in boxes. You know, if they needed water, they had water. They covered it, and they flew them back to Texas. I figured they'd give them asylum or something, but they put them back, yeah? But a lot of those turtles are, they're not many of them, and they were shocked. They're confused, the climate. Everything's not the same. Look, look at the... The wind fires in Colorado, the tornadoes. In, look at this winter we're having. I think today's the real first cold day that I can remember. So it, it's getting a little crazy. Another thing I heard in, in, in the news was um, a guy in Thailand woke up with a screaming elephant in his kitchen. <laughs> an elephant broke the wall to his kitchen, went in his kitchen and started screaming. What a way, to, you know, I, I had a mother-in-law like that. <laughs> I could relate to the guy. Six in the morning, pots and pans and singing, and, and there wasn't much breakfast to talk about when you got up, but I could relate to the guy. Um, if, if you've done, anyone done 23 and Me? Anyone done 23 and Me? Well, now they're going to go into making drugs using the genetic code to make custom drugs for your gene map. So that's going to be really, really interesting. Tesla. It's coming out with a phone. It's called Pi. They say it's just going to be incredible. Someone calling me? No, it's going to be incredible. And so we're going to see what's up. You know they have a star dish, the Starlink? Well, now they found a problem with it. Cats love it because it warms up. <laughs> so now the owner's got to put barriers so cats don't go and lay on top of the, of the dish because it warms up to melt the ice or the snow. And the last thing I wanted to share with you, you know, is that... Um, these two years, you have time to think. I learned a new word. People who shop at Walmart constantly, they're known as Wal Walmartians. <laughs> I didn't know that. That's a new word, Walmartians. Well, what a cool, not Walmarters or Walmartians is what they're called. And, and the other thing that was very interesting, I was, I rarely eat in a fast food, but I was desperate and I needed to eat something because my handshake when I don't eat. So I went and got a chicken sandwich at a fast food place. And I ordered the chicken, and I was, you know, wow, it's crispy, it's good. And then I looked at the advertisement sandwich, and it said it was 100% chicken. <laughs> now you're messing with my head, because why wouldn't it not be 100% chicken? So I buy it, it's in the bag, it's laying there, nothing's moving in the bag, so. But I didn't enjoy it when I ate it because I kept, they had to tell me that it was 100% chicken. I don't know. But we got 100% music. We're going to get now Caribe Groove is going to give you some music. And as they set up, as, as they take the stage, come up to stage, our guests for tonight are Amy Golden, we have Yvette Monell, and we have my... My guest who got lost and I found him in the street, Bob Blaze, baby. He's going to be here tonight. And for comic relief, we have Morgan Gallo. She's, she's rocking it. And she's going to give us some comic relief. So we're going to bring up Caribe Groove. Please take your places. Mm -hmm. 
I like my coffee black, no milk and hold the sugar please Can't take too much because the jitters just ain't good for me When clouds are loud I find it gets so hard to feed my meager needs Like wilted flower, thirsty soil, a prelude to the falling leaves Also that he said, we are Caribe group. Enjoy our music, have fun, and dance in the chair.
The camera, the camera's on? Yeah, both of them? Okay. <laughs> Facebook Live is still streaming? Yeah? Are we recording? Make sure we're recording. Yeah, both cameras recording? Okay. I edit this later. It's <laughs> long days. Okay. So I'm here with Amy Golden, and Amy has been here. How long have you been here in, in St. Augustine? Uh, seven years now. Oh, wow, wow. Now seven years of good luck. Of good luck, yes. <laughs> uh, it's uh, the year of the tiger, I think, is coming now for the Chinese. But uh, you originally were born where? Originally were born. <laughs> originally, yeah. in, my, in, this, in this particular life, uh, Philadelphia. Philadelphia. Mm -hmm. But yeah. I grew up at the Jersey Shore. Oh. Oh. That's some Jerseyites. Mm -hmm. and, and now uh, you grew up in Jersey? Yeah, I grew up in Atlantic City. Oh. Yeah. And oh. so, uh, you know, uh, that so. explains my lifelong Springsteen obsession. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, let me ask you the, this question um, is basically do you, um, when, when you were uh, in, in Jersey, and you went to school, was there anything you were attracted to, uh, you know, when it came to art or music or anything like that? Well, you know, I was always a writer. I always wrote, but it was always just a hobby, mm -hmm. you know. Mm -hmm. Got to make a living. Right, right. <laughs> Not practical. You right. don't want to tell your mother, I'm going to be a poet. <laughs> uh, so so, so w when, you did, w when you did all your, um, when you did, all your schooling, and you went to college right away, or did no. you take a break? No, no, I kind of did here and there, did a little bit of community college, then I got a, a job with the airlines, mm -hmm. which, you know, I kind of hated yeah, yeah. <laughs> for a couple of years. Yeah, I find that one, one job, the worst job in an airline is the guy who has to deal with baggage claim. I did, you know what? I did some of that. I'm not, did you? Yeah, I was the person people complained to. It was, oh, it was a great boy. job. Yeah. yeah, well, I, I guess it's great because once you leave, it's, everything's great after yeah, you Yeah, it's like work. hitting your head with a hammer. It yeah. feels so good when yeah. it stops. <laughs> <laughs> so, so here's the thing. So, so now you airlines, and then you had told me that someone put a brochure at work or something like that? <laughs> yeah, when I was working for the airlines, I, I think I was not hiding it well that I was unsatisfied with my job. <laughs> And uh, one of my coworkers came back from vacation and uh, gave me a brochure and said, I think this might be something you might be interested in. And it was a, a brochure for a cruise line, a tall ship cruise line. And um, I ended up uh, going, you know, booking a vacation. And uh, then I, I, at the end of the two weeks, I said, you know, I don't want to leave. I want to work here. Mm. So <laughs> that's what, what I ended up doing what, for the next couple of years. What kind of ship is it? It was, a, it was like a pirate ship, really. Really? <laughs> I mean, I'm not kidding when I say that. They, they, yeah. yeah. It's, um, it was a tall ship, beautiful ship. It was once owned by Aristotle Onassis, as a matter of fact. Wow. How um, many people would it hold? Uh, like 130. It was wow. a small, yeah, small, beautiful, beautiful sailing ship. So it was very boutique. The, the yeah. cruise was really like a boutique cruise. It well, wasn't like these we didn't call it that in those days, but right. yes, I, that's a fancy way of putting it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and, and so you, you sailed, what, through the Caribbean? Uh, through, yeah, through, you know, mostly uh, the Bahamas and the West Indies. Oh, my Lord. Yeah, it was, this, it was great. It, how, how long did you do that? Oh, um, like probably three and a half, four years. And, and then you went, then, after, after you left that job, you had to go... I mean, that's a dream job. Oh, it was. But, you know, it's sort of like, it was sort of like summer camp for adults. You can't make a career out of it. Yeah, you know, it was yeah, like, yeah. it was a nice, it was great while it lasted. It was a fantasy I'll never forget. It was right. wonderful. But, yeah, you can't make a living. Wow. And then, and then what happens is, I think you ended up in the pharmaceutical business. Yeah, I went, uh, I didn't want to go back to Philadelphia. It's sort of like, you know, there's no going back to Philadelphia after that. So, uh, I thought, well, where's, the, where's the, the, the most tropical place that I can still make a living? Miami. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so I ended up in Miami for like uh, 40 years. Wow. <laughs> yeah, and I, I eventually made a career in well, the pharmaceutical industry. Well, you must have seen Miami really change, too. Oh, please. And when I got right. there, it was great. It was like the Miami Vice year, well, right before the Miami Vice years, when it was still like uh, they were having shootouts at the mall, and it was, <laughs> it was crazy. But we saw it develop, and, you know. Yeah, was, up, up in New York, we say in Miami, if you take a coin and you scrape a wall, cocaine comes out of yeah, it. Yeah, that was pretty much it. <laughs> you know, like any, any dollar bill you got in Miami during the 80s, you know, oh, had some 
kind of residue on it. Oh my <laughs> lord! Yeah, yeah it was, look at the date on your it dollar. Was, it was wild. Wow. Yeah, but and, it was but it was fun. And so, but you were always writing, and you, mm -hmm. writing was still something you were still doing. Yeah, always. But just you know, no just time. as my hobby and right, you know. So now you come here. Yeah. You sort of semi-retired, and now you can really dabble in in what you really wanted to kind of try out, but you had to put bread and butter on the table. Right, and, and when I came here, it was like I could really devote myself to it, and then luckily, I actually found a, a wonderful community um, immediate, almost immediately. Mm -hmm. um, you know, the arts community here is, you know, a very rich and welcoming community, and, um, uh, you know, I kind of got my foot in the door right away, and it was, it was really so, so, serendipitous. So your first play that you actually it went up not too long ago was what? Um, it was that at was, a festival or something? You well, played. the first one was Shrink Wrap. Okay. Which um, was... That was funny. I saw that. Yeah. Uh, that was funny. <laughs> well, you were actually in the original well, 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 when I, it was sort of the original yeah, iteration. Yeah, but, yeah, yeah. But then we made it into a full-length actual yes, play. Yes, Yeah, and um, uh, that was right before the pandemic. Our, oh. our last show was literally two weeks before everything shut down. Mm. We were very, very lucky with that. Right, right. Yeah. Yeah. And then, um, you know, a few things since then. I, I was lucky enough to have a, um, uh, have a short piece accepted in, uh, at the Five and Dime Theater in Jacksonville for mm -hmm. their, their shorts festival, which was very well received, called Gated Communities. And, um, you know, a couple of other little things here right. and there. Now, you're working on something called, what, Sisters O'Toole or something like that? Yeah, the Sisters O'Toole. Um, that was, uh, we were actually uh, going to produce that uh, classic theater was going to, um, uh, that was going to be on the lineup this season, but we had some... Uh, casting some, issues? Some casting issues and some scheduling issues, and, you know, we just decided instead of trying to duct tape it together, we we're going to, um, you know, just put it off until next season. So hopefully next season, you know, the Sisters O'Toole will come to life. Yeah, yeah, I have a background in theater and, and when it's not, when their budgets are strained and cat, oh, it, it's, it's, it's really a endeavor of love. You really have to have that passion for it. Oh, for sure. Yeah. And, and you know, <laughs> one of the other things is one of the other theater companies in the area was uh, um, auditioning for the Shawshank Redemption which is all men. They sucked up every man in the area. I couldn't, I, was like, I couldn't cast my own play because everybody was going to prison with it's the Shawshank Redemption. It's a men's prison, <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Well, that, you know, that's bad luck. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's, but, it's hard. But I will say a classic theater um, uh, does have a, a great lineup for this season. Mm -hmm. um, the Sisters O'Toole is being uh, replaced by a really funny... Um, kind of dark comedy called Murderers, mm. which is, uh, involves a, uh, uh, a series of murders at a senior citizen, an upscale senior citizen complex in Florida. <laughs> there's revenge, there's murder, there's money, there's backstabbing. You'll love it. It's fabulous. Uh, uh. <laughs> and then uh, after that, in um, March, we're going to have No Exit, which um, is going to be really interesting. It's the Jean-Paul Sartre, uh, you know, absurdist, you know, dark comedy, but it's completely reimagined um, by a local uh, writer and actress, uh, Heather Eggleston, who uh, some of you might have seen in some of the local productions. She's done a fabulous job updating it, and it's it's very modern. It's really edgy. It's really fun. It's going to be great. And then our last show of the season. Um, is going to be uh, The Immigrant, which is a, a really heartwarming, you know, wonderful play about a, um, a Russian immigrant who uh, in the early 1900s um, goes to Texas and, you know, overcomes his, his cultural issues, his, you know, language problems and becomes a real beloved pillar of the community. So that's a, a lovely way for us to end our season this year. Mm -hmm. That's, you know, theater is, is I went, <clears throat> I attended an academy, they invited me, that's the only way you could get in, so I went, and uh, I had my uh, racial trouble in the sense of, of the curriculum and me, you know, where I thought they needed to take me and not take me that way, you know, why are you teaching me to talk Cockney, you know, 
when I look more <laughs> like I, I talk like an, I should talk more like a Middle Eastern man or you know or Hispanic or something. Those roles are for me. You know what I'm saying? You've got the Anthony Quinn thing going on. Yeah, there. right. It could be right. Sorbo the Greek. <laughs> yeah, I could be Sorbo the Greek, or I could be a Chalamachal. You know, whatever. <laughs> whatever. So they were teaching me these accents. I said, look, I, I'm. The, what am I going to play? A Puerto Rican lost in Dublin? I mean, come on. <laughs> you know. And, and and those clashes. Eventually, I I after a year or so, I, I said it, it's time to move on. I need. I need something a little more expansive. But, um, but I remember being in that academy, there were two young uh, actors, uh, and they would take a tent. And at that time, the homeless thing exploded in New York. And they would go under one of these bridges where there were tons of homeless people. They'd put up their tent, and they'd do theater for them. Wow. This was awesome. That's great. It was awesome. Yeah, I know the BO was, was difficult, but, you know, <laughs> well, it, 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 you know, it's people that are not, you know, they don't have uh, what we take for granted. But the thing is, they loved it. They loved the theater. And, um, yeah, yeah, I, I feel like there's not enough theater. Everybody deserves art, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And no so, who. are you planning on any, anything else in the future? I mean, you're um, busy with the classic theater and the yeah, new pieces. Yeah, and uh, there's one interesting thing. A classic theater um, is, um, has been asked, and we're very flattered to have been asked, by um, Chris Bodor of Ancient City Poets. Um, he has uh, a big thing coming up. Uh, it's going to be the first, hopefully, annual uh, poet Fest mm -hmm. uh, coming mm -hmm. up in April, and he mm -hmm. has asked um, a classic theater to sort of come up with something to participate with, and we are uh, we have a 50-minute uh, a slot, and we're going to be doing a um, uh, a reading of a very interesting um, original play by a playwright uh, from South Florida, as a matter okay. of fact, that I met mm -hmm. uh, named Phil Butera. And it's called the apparition. And the thing that makes it perfect for Poet Fest is that it's a very abstract kind of nonlinear play, but it's about different artists and their um, communication with the muse of creativity. Mm. And so each artist and and the poet um, discuss what their process is, where they are in their journey, and uh, it's 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 funny and it's interesting and it's quirky and it's. Oh. Yeah, it's and it's great. kind of perfect, the perfect blend for and that. You, and you also direct your plays. You uh, that well, um, eh, somewhat. Uh, <laughs> you put in your two cents. I, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, let's just say I'm the, I'm the burr in the director's saddle. <laughs> uh, well, well, you know, people always put in their two cents. I remember Sidney Poitier talking when he did um, <clears throat> In the Heat or whatever, the movie, uh, where a businessman slaps him. And that was in the script. Mm -hmm. And he said, no, 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 I have to slap him back. And the, the director, well, what do you mean? You're going to tell me that a detective from Philadelphia is going to get slapped and he's not going to slap back? <laughs> and they thought, and they said, by God, you're right. You just put that in. You know? <laughs> and, so, and, you see, he goes, Psh, and he goes, Psh, in the movie. You yeah, know? for sure that guy never had been to Philadelphia. <laughs> yeah, 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 right. Never wrote it. He said, I was offended by that, really. So yeah. that's great. Yeah. Let's give a hand to Amy. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. And, uh, Thank you. We're, we're going to set up for our next guest, so we're going to take a, a, a little, a, a little three-minute pause here while we mic the next person. Okay. Thank you for having me. With Yvette Monell. <laughs> as, as, as Yvette came into the show, so many people were saying, hey, hey, hey. she knows so many people. You've been here how long now? Since 2005. Oh, wow. So that, oof, that's 16, 17, oh. no, 16 ooh, years. That's a long time. That is, well, I mean, if you're in prison, it is a long time. <laughs> yes. No, not for St. Uh, Augustine. It went for, <laughs> I, I feel like my family is here. Just so many people that I love and have worked with and, and new faces that I've met. It's incredible. Well, well, I brought you here because you, you have a magazine called Old City. And uh, yeah, you can hold it out there. 
The light is good. Oh, hey, hey. <laughs> Oh, you know, it's funny because uh, if you don't know St. Augustine, some people don't understand why it's called Old City. Okay, and tell us, so why is it called well, Old City? this is the nation's oldest city here yeah. in St. Augustine. Yeah. So, it, it, um, it's amazing how many people don't know that. It is. You it know. really is. Well, if, if you're not if from around the, these they'll, parts. They'll say uh, that place up in the north, uh, I forget. They'll, they'll say a place in Virginia. They'll place a place for Plymouth Rock. <laughs> the thing, and it's like, hello, um, wrong answer, wrong answer. So tell me, wh where, where were you born? I was born in Pittsburgh. Pittsburgh. Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. Okay. Yeah. All right. Near Philly, actually. Yeah, I think they made it into the playoffs. I'm not. Did totally. they really? Yeah, I think they. I think they made it into Gotta the playoffs. Gotta be a Steelers fan if you're yeah, from Pittsburgh. Yeah, they played. Pittsburgh. They played. Yeah. Well, the Jaguars were playing, but it turned into a clown show. Oh. So, <laughs> so I, I still got to read more about that. That was very interesting. But um, now. Now, did you grow up in, in Philadelphia? You, I mean in Philadelphia, in Pittsburgh? Pittsburgh. Yes. You yes. did your schooling and everything yes. there? Mm -hmm. Did you gravitate to anything in school? Um, fashion, primarily mm -hmm. fashion. There wasn't uh, a lot of fashion in school. Now, you had told me there was a teacher when you were little who saw something in you. Yes, wonderful. Dan Bullock, wonderful teacher, incredible. I was uh, inner city school and great art programs there. The Carnegie Museum uh, was where I went to art school. Oh, Saturday wow. afternoon art classes they had there. Wow. Fantastic. And program. what would you, you said that charcoal was, was your, oh, your yeah. that oh, was the baby? You, you remember all this stuff. Yeah. <laughs> charcoal yeah. was your uh, that was forte? That was my favorite medium. Yes, wow. yes. Today wow. I do a little bit of oil, but mostly with, with my camera. I enjoy wow. Or taking yeah, photographs. I, I always we bump into each other because I, I do first coast TV, so I go here or there, mm -hmm. and I, I always mm -hmm. see you, especially the events that are galas, places where there's yeah, uh, symphonies and, and you know that kind of culture thing. And You're those there. are those are the givers. Those are where the givers are, and mm -hmm. those where that's where uh, people need help. They need uh, they need the recognition to realize that these organizations, which we have so many of them, not just art organizations, right, but right. Play, like Hospice and Alpha Omega, amazing amazing givers in this community, and yes. that's why I like to you know, highlight them a little bit. The, show the, them the, off. That's something I've noticed in St. Augustine. You know, behind the camera now for like seven years is is all the charity that's done at all different levels, mm -hmm. you know? Um, someone said when you say good morning to someone, it's a form of charity, you know? Mm -hmm. And I never thought of it that way. And, and when you say thank you to people, yes. you know, I always feel the, 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 the girl in the restaurant, you know, to say thank you, you know? Mm -hmm. Thank you for bringing the cutlery. Thank you for taking the plate away. That goes a long way. I was in front of, uh, coming out of Publix and almost tripped over a little dog. And the man was so happy that I, pet his dog and said hello and it was like I could see him it just kind of lit him up so yeah. it's all it's always good I think yeah. someone said it doesn't take much to be human no. you just have to take that pause that's right. just be human yeah. yeah now now how did you get into the magazine thing because you like me didn't go to college you mm -hmm. learned everything mm -hmm. the hard way I did. You trial know. and error. Yes. Yeah, yeah trial and error, mm. like this show. <laughs> no, no, but every show, I always tell everybody, the third show is the show where we have a template. Oh. The first three shows, we're, we're, we're figuring everything this out. This is not the third show. How many shows is this for you? This is the first well, show this, of the season. This, well, right. I mean in one place, but right. this is probably show 45 or something fantastic. like that. Fantastic. Yeah, this is season oh, yeah. five. This is fantastic. We're so proud of you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Every time I'm, I, I always say I'm not going to do it again. It's too much work. <laughs> I, I can then, relate. Trust me. <laughs> and then someone drags me. I said, "Well, will I find enough interesting people in this community oh. for another show?" My list overflows. You, you got know. it right here. I mean, mm -hmm. all these wonderful yeah, people yeah, that yeah. are here. Everyone so much has talent. an interest. I think it was Carter, Carter Lord, uh, who helps is helping us with with uh, Mike uh, Konapaki. Um, he was saying to me the other day, every community, no matter how small, there are stories to be told from those people who live there mm -hmm. that are interesting, that are captivating. And, and he's very right. He's very right. But let's go back to your camera. Now, 
you had sort of a magazine in Pittsburgh. I did. What I, was the name I, of that magazine? Pittsburgh Style. Pittsburgh uh, Style. Pittsburgh I love Pittsburgh Style. It. And yeah. it was really cool because uh, a, a girl named Deborah Kiss uh, approached me and my husband at the time uh, because I had a modeling agency, mm -hmm. a small agency, not a whole lot of fashion work in Pittsburgh. But what we did, we took all the different boutiques around town and photographed models and set up. I mean, the setups and the, the time that went into getting one photograph in those 24 oh. frames was incredible. Back yeah. in the old days when oh. you shot real film. Film. Oh. But, I got uh, 24. <laughs> Is this worth one of those pictures? <laughs> yeah. Am I going to, oh. just, you know? Yeah. Well, it was great when Kodak had the thing, you, you, you only paid for the ones you liked. Oh, uh, okay. well, this one goes out, this one. I got one left. That's 10 cents. Thank you. You know. No, we did the dark room. We did the <laughs> shaking the pans oh, and, you know, <laughs> oh, turn down the light. Yes. <laughs> yeah. No, it was uh, yeah. 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 a different time. But, yes. yeah, from, um, from that, um, my husband and I, at the time, we, we had a couple of kids, and we wanted to give them a better life, so we moved them to Florida. All right, yeah. All right. Yeah. 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 <laughs> But, but now we moved to Naples, okay? <laughs> but, but, still there. <laughs> but, but you also you, you also do a lot of the writing of the articles. Oh, don't tell anyone that. No, no, no. I, I, I think you're excellent. Jill's out there. She's no, going to no. help. <laughs> Renee's written some. Yeah, yeah. Well, no, I know you have contributors. Yes. Do but I know you also write articles. I do. You I know. do. Yeah, and, I, get, and, I get stuck doing a lot of the work. But. What's the most cha What You know, so now this is all city. Now, how many magazines have you had in this city? Okay, so let's do the rundown. Well, you know, I didn't show this one off. This one, um, this one didn't quite work out, but that is you. Look how fantastic. <laughs> <laughs> but great cover. Shannon, Shannon's out there somewhere. Shannon's yeah, Shannon's there. back there, too. Shannon's out there. That is a great cover. Another the, actually, creative and person. I'll, I'll show off. That is one of my photographs. So. Yes, yes. Um, yes. Uh, but what happens, let's see. I'll, I'll give you the rundown. I... Um, left Naples, eventually moved to St. Augustine, and there was no city magazine here. Wow. I completely moved here to work with horses and work in the equestrian right. industry. Yes. And uh, when I got here, I had to cash a paycheck, and I went downtown to St. Augustine. Couldn't believe where I moved to. And uh, <laughs> I said, wow, where's the city magazine, having come from Pittsburgh right. and you know, always yeah. being in the business? And there wasn't one. So wow. that was in 2005, and I started Old City Life magazine mm -hmm. back then. Eventually that was sold um, and uh, I then uh, after my non-compete was up mm -hmm. I started uh, Sam, St. Augustine right, magazine. I remember that. And basically Old City is St. Augustine magazine. Mm -hmm. uh, took about two years off for COVID. Well, mm -hmm. little, you know, COVID time Tell off. Uh, and right, right, just right before COVID I relaunched as Old City because Old City Life uh, was closed and went, went uh, I guess they put it to bed, you mm -hmm. could say. And so uh, decided to come back. People know me as Old City Vet. Old City Vet. That's it's better me. than, than <laughs> Old Vet City. Okay. Yeah. So it was easy coming back, and a lot of people are happy because they see it's the, the feeling that the first magazine had. And mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. everything that in the publication is for charity, nonprofit, and the arts. Wow. Um, very seldom do you find articles that don't have something to do with the givers or the creative mm -hmm. in this case. I love you because you're not a quitter. Oh, thank you. just you. keep going. Man, no matter how bad it gets. I've seen her at the, at the bottom saying, oh, I'm not giving up. <laughs> it, it, it looks like the scene from um, oh. Gone with the Wind. From <laughs> Stan <laughs> <laughs> you know. <laughs> Thank you. So so that's that's very good. So but what do you want your magazine to to make every, money? <laughs> Come on, subscribe. Okay. I'm subscribed. I'm subscribed. No, it's, and, it and really is. Um, I you know. Do you want to expand it? Do you do you want to put other? Th you know, because you start with a magazine with what you can do, but you have a vision of what you you know if if you had all the artists, if you had everything, you could take it to this other level. 
-hmm. Is there another level where you'd like to take this magazine? I see it growing with the community, you know, as mm -hmm. we grow. Um, and, and we are growing people-wise, but as far as the art community, it just keeps getting better and better. Yes. I mean, these artists are just yes. amazing. Yes. You, you go to Art Walk and you walk around and you see what's happening. It's mm -hmm. really exciting. Yeah. And same thing with theater. Yeah, I just uh, filmed La Traviata. I uh -huh, was out there. Yes. I also mm -hmm. filmed the concert from that famous uh, uh, woman, uh, Gatian is her name, from Spain, mm -hmm. also play. Uh, the St. Augustine Music Festival is bringing on the St. John's Cultural Council is just killing Christina it, putting on. Oh, Lord, yeah. you know, yeah. superhero. Mm -hmm. So, um, so everyone's benefit. Photography, everything is just booming in this city. It really and is, I and it needs coverage. It needs proper coverage. So mm -hmm. please, I, I'm mm -hmm. totally open to uh, stories and yes. things. Yes. Things people have to share. The yeah. more, the more input there is, the more community. It's a community magazine, and that's the way I want to keep it. All right. you know, I'm not looking to have the uh, medical ads and all the crap. You know. Uh, yeah, it'd be nice to have all that money, but that's not where my heart is. I, I know. You know, this is I mean, definitely. You go, you go through seven pages. Pages of advertising, then there's a little uh, article about this big in the corner. It hurts my heart. And it says, the uh. beavers are leaving Florida. Uh. <laughs> and then you go through another six, seven pages of advertising. Then oh, and you sad. wonder, why did I? Mm. I, I remember in the old days when, the, when magazines were really big, yeah. and your girlfriend mm. will, gets very sick, and she said, pick me these magazines in a, in a <laughs> container of ice cream. <laughs> and you'd go out there like, okay, L, what was the other one? Oh, Vogue, okay. Vogue, Vogue, Women's Wear. Daily. Yeah. But there were also, <laughs> for guys, there were great magazines like Life magazine. Mm -hmm. I remember that. was I love that magazine. Yeah, GQ. Uh, GQ is another great magazine. You look like you just magazine, stepped off the like page. you step up your, yeah. your fashion. <laughs> so, so that is. So I really don't know how to say thank you for what you do for the community oh, wow. when it comes to this. I, no, I think it's important. You know, to come to a city like St. Augustine with so much culture and not have a city magazine. It, it, it's like I'm still amazed that that right, happened. Right. You know, and it, it is. It's it, honestly white paper uh, publications. You see what's happening in this. You go in a grocery store, and they're paper thin, and it is not a cheap project. Uh, but online, at least thirty thousand I hit uh, as far as getting wow. the publication right. out there. So it's very exciting. Yeah, we, we need a magazine um, like a Mexican party needs a piñata. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, you can use that. Yeah. Oh, all right. Well, I thank you so much for I being on the show. Thank you. Thank you. You, thank said yes. you for all you do. Thank you. So this is Karibe Group. Let me let me introduce you a little bit about. Uh, I've known them for a while. They're a great band. They're a fusion Latin band. They will play everything from disco to bachata to merengue. They rock and roll. You name it. They also take their own songs and Latinize them, and they have a great beat. And you guys are where? Where are you guys localized? In Jacksonville, Florida. In Jacksonville, Florida. But they spend a lot of time here, so that's why I bring them here. Uh, Shannon Hart and I organize an event for Halloween. I think some yeah. of you like it. <laughs> And they rocked the house. It was great to be up there because the next big event was going to be the Night of Lights, and we've been in a hole for so long. You know, the tickets are okay now, yeah. and so so this is great. So I, I can't say much more about them. Your name is Maria Angel, and you're from Venezuela. Venezuela. My name is Aguita from Dominican Republic. No. <laughs> James Story, our guitar from Puerto Rico. Puerto Rico, And Andres from Colombia, drums. So if you got an event, anything, you know, if you have a wedding, if you have a divorce, if you... We should celebrate. Of course, you should celebrate, exactly. If you make a party for weddings, make a party for divorce. I'm going to leave you with Caribe Groove. Thank you. It's bachata time.
is doing comedy everywhere, everywhere. She's, all, she's in Orlando, she's in Jacksonville, she's here, she's everywhere. Uh, she was lately in, uh, or one of the places she was not too long ago was uh, the Broadway Comedy Club in New York City. So she's starting to grow, she's starting to grow. So I'm not holding it back. Let's bring you Morgan Gallo. Hey guys, did I turn it on? I thought I turned it on, did I turn yeah, it on? Yeah, yeah. Can you hear me? Yeah. I feel like I'm shouting into the void, which is usually what I do. Uh, yeah, my name's Morgan, I, uh, I am single, which is exciting. I've been single for like three years though. Yeah, three, yeah, three years, girl. But I'm not on the market, okay? I'm on frickin' clearance at this point. <laughs> No, 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 like you walk into a raw store, I'm on that back rack with all of the extra large Selena t-shirts. That's where I belong, okay? And all the ill-fitting lingerie that your Nana buys at Christmas, that's where I belong, okay? No, but I'm at that age where like my friends are getting married, you know what I mean? My friends are getting married, they're having kids, they have these like big fat rocks on their fingers. I'd be lucky to get a friendship bracelet from a dude right now, okay? Specifically the one he made at Boy Scout camp that he held on to for no reason. That's the one I want, okay? That's the one I want. And I date up in like the Jacksonville area. You guys been to Jacksonville lately? Oh, yeah. <laughs> Girl, dating in Jacksonville is like picking through the trash, okay? <laughs> Like, I am a, calm down, I'm not dating you, calm down. Like, I am a raccoon in a dumpster in the back of an Outback Steakhouse. That's where I'm at, okay? I'd be lucky to find the center of a blooming onion. And I'm not actually from here, I'm from Colorado originally, okay? So, like, back home, like, I'm used to, if I want to find a guy that's, tall, dark, handsome, I could find him, no problem. In Jacksonville, I'm just happy if a dude has all of his teeth. <laughs> That's all I want. That's all I want. Uh, I feel like we're getting to know each other tonight. You know, we've had a really fun show. Everyone's doing a great job here. I have a question for the audience. I want to do like a temperature check, okay? How do we feel, let's be honest with each other, how do we feel about spanking our kids. No. Ooh, no. Mm. Oh, one lone clap, really aggressive in the back. I feel like you know my mom, I'm scared now. Jesus. No, it's weird, because like I'm a millennial, people in my generation are doing this thing now. You've probably seen on Facebook where they're like, oh, spanking is child abuse, right? Like, my friends get so mad for me when I tell them I was spanked growing up. They're like, oh, my God, Morgan. <laughs> you were abused. You are a child of abuse. No, dude. I'm a child of Latinos, okay? <laughs> That's our love language, all right? White kids got iPods growing up. I got splinters in my butt. That's just how it was, yes. Some of you guys are looking at me like, there's no way this chick is Hispanic. Here's the thing, okay. Here's the thing. I'm like, I'm like tan enough to be hate crimed, okay? <laughs> but also, white enough to be the one that did it. <laughs> Hispanic people are clapping. I don't know what to tell you guys. They're onto it. They're into it. No, it, I, uh, my, I'm half Hispanic, so my dad is from Argentina, and my mom is from the Jersey Shore. <laughs> so, like, one of my parents is tan, and the other is sprayed. You guys know how that works, right? Yeah, yeah. No, I think, I think being half Hispanic to me really just means that I have, like, one set of grandparents I call Nana and Nono, and then the other set I call when I need money. <laughs> it's the white ones if you didn't pick up on that it's the white ones yeah they're more like a western union it's fine it's fine <laughs> I grew up in the same town I went to college too that was Boulder Colorado University of Colorado and um, going to college in your hometown is really weird 
Because, like, suddenly I was going out to all the same restaurants with my adult friends that my parents used to spank me in, okay? <laughs> and let me tell you, okay, Latin parents get creative when there's not a chancla in their pocket, okay? <laughs> like, have you ever been beaten with a breadstick at an Olive Garden? <laughs> They're endless, okay? <laughs> yeah, Parmesan cheese stuck to your butt. That's how I walked out of there. Even the waitress remembered me at this Olive Garden. Like, she saw me all grown up and gave me a playful smack on the butt because, you know, when you're here, you're family. <laughs> That's how it was at that Olive Garden. No, I love my parents. My parents always taught me to be, like, proud of who I am, you know, and uh, I've been contemplating this a lot. It's like, new year, new me. Everyone's on their health goals. Everyone's trying to get a new body. I'm, I'm happy with my body. I'm a voluptuous woman, you know. Oh, thanks for the one clap <laughs> in the back. <laughs> I'm doing good, Jorge. I'm doing really good up here. No, we have some voluptuous women in the audience. Where are you at? I can... There you go. There you go. I can't see any of you, so you could be lying. I don't know. You could be lying. I like being voluptuous. I do. Uh, except when I go to the doctor, because that's not the word they have written down on my weight chart at the moment. Why do they have to weigh you every time you go to the doctor, guys? And it's always on that ancient abacus scale from what, 1200 BC? That might as well announce how fat you are with how loud it clunks to one side in the hallway in front of everyone, okay. We have the technology to send a rocket to Mars, but we're still weighing people like the daily catch at a fish market. <laughs> I got on the scale, the nurse was like, oh, we got a big one. <laughs> We're gonna need a bigger boat, doc. Like, I came here for my flu shot, not a shot at my self-esteem, nurse Jackie, okay? I'll leave you guys with this. There's this new operation people are doing that I think is really weird. Have you guys ever heard of a Brazilian butt lift? <laughs> Some of the girls, that guy just goes, ooh, yeah. <laughs> it's this procedure where they suck all of the fat out of your stomach, inject it into your butt, and your boyfriend still cheats on you, okay? <laughs> My name's Morgan Gal. You guys have been so much fun. Thanks for having me tonight. Let's give Morgan a, let's give Morgan a hand. comes as a messenger for us. Um, I was do. talking with uh, Greg Van Hoesch. Yes. And uh, he's the man, well, he's one of the many people behind the St. Augustine Film Festival. Mm -hmm. And Rene was going to tell us a little bit about the, the film festival, when it's going to happen, what's, what's coming and all that. Yeah, it's coming up quick, January 20th through 23rd at four different venues, including the one we're filming in right now, mm -hmm. the Lincolnville Museum and Cultural Center will have four different films, and Lewis Auditorium at Flagler College, of course, the Alcazar Room, which is part of Leitner Museum, City Hall, it's a new venue space, and of course, Coger Gamache, which is a smaller theater space at Flagler mm -hmm. College. Right, yeah, it's a very comfortable little theater. Yeah. I've seen a lot of films there. Um, especially the student films play there, and I've seen some documentaries there too. Right, before. right. And this is the 12th annual film festival. Wow. Last year it was all virtual, so we're really yes. excited to be able to see some films in person. There's still a virtual option this year though. Mm -hmm. Go to the website, find the virtual option, you can stream what the What is films. the website? What's it the website? It is staugfilmfest.com. stauggfilmfest.org. Dot com. Oh, dot com. <laughs> dot yeah. com. All right, and there you find the you schedule. The schedule, uh, there are more than 50 independent films wow. screening in three or four days. 
And the virtual option, you can stream for a little bit longer, five full days. So, so you have five, a, a window of five days to to see to all see these the film. films, wow. and it's a nice option. You know, you can come in person, or you can see it virtually from any device that you would like to. Yeah, there's some people who are still hesitant on going out and stuff, right. and you have to respect that. And mm -hmm. so, I, I think that's awesome. And these films are selected from by Greg and a board from the Fort Lauderdale Film Festival. So they have been seen in Fort Lauderdale in November. They're all great films, high quality, foreign and American films, and mm -hmm. there are a few local films here. Really? Yes. Oh, wow. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Any films in particular on the festival that are have a buzz or something to them? There are, and those are highlighted as feature films on okay. the website. Right. Uh, one is called Americanish. Uh, Freedom on Our Minds mm -hmm. is the local film, and it is about the civil rights movement here in St. Augustine. All right. So it's a docudrama, okay. and it's by Laura Real Scarpetti mm -hmm. and Chad Light. Oh, we all know Chad. Chad Light, yeah. He was on my first St. Augustine Tonight show. Yeah. He was a wonderful guest, very gracious, a wonderful man. Well, he is the director of that film, wow. and he stars in it. Oh, wow. So, Freedom on Our Minds. Okay. Make sure you see that. Yes. That will be in Lewis Auditorium, which mm -hmm. seats about 800 people, so lots of space. You can spread out, right, see right. the film. Yeah, Chad's done a lot of projects um, that are na nationwide. Yeah. Yes. So uh, it'd be wonderful to bring them back to the show after all these years. So thank you so much. Thank you so thank much you. for that. You can stay here. Is uh, someone from the St. John's Cultural Council here? No? They were trying to get someone here. Uh, the St. John's Cultural Council is uh, backing this show and backing a lot of things in town. And I suggest that you um, go to the website. Everything's there. I know uh, Lenny Foster, are you still out there? Yeah, he is. Yay. I know. I, I, I know the St. John's Cultural Council is also helping in a, ex, many things, but Lenny is having a, a uh, exhibition of his photography coming up. So you go website there, or you could talk to Lenny after the show. He'll tell you all about it. I mean, Lenny's photography is amazing. It amazing. is. I follow you on Instagram, Lenny. And I and I don't say that because he gave me twenty dollars before the show. <laughs> <laughs> really mean. No, Lenny's photography, he has this gallery right there on, on King Street. Um, not to go in it is, is a crime, really. Uh, he's a wonderful host, uh, not only a photographer, but a wonderful, wonderful host. We love him very much. We're lucky to have him here in the community. But the St. John's Cultural Council has, they have irons in all the fires. They do. It's, it's, it's amazing uh, the transformation uh, that the council has taken. And, uh, and they're helping us here with the show, and that is very much appreciated. They're helping us on the music side. So uh, that's really good. So that's our six minutes of uh, promoting some things. We're going to come now with our next guest. will be Bob Blaze. So just give us one little moment till we mic him up. Thank you. Thank you. St. Audrey Film Festival. We're here with Bob Blaze. <laughs> Bob is in that area of thinking that's very challenging. And we had this great, great uh, discussion. And uh, let me see. Oh, they were here, the, the books that I had on. They, they, yes, the, if you can bring those. Thank you. But. Um, Bob, I met him through someone else who said, well, you want to talk to Bob, because I said to myself, I want to talk about UFOs. Do you know anyone in town who, who would be knowledgeable in that subject? Once you go into the UFO phenomenon, you go into a lot of other things, transcendental meditation, you go into Bible scripture, you go, these are, this is a book by Bob called Trilogue. And these are his um, writings on the Astro-Mayan calendar. Mm -hmm. Bob is 
85 or 86? 83. 83 years old. <laughs> Solid like a rock. I'm, I'm, you know, I'm calling Mike Tyson tomorrow. We're going to set that oh, fight. Yeah, Mike yeah. Tyson. So, so, and, and um, Bob has had a very interesting life. The first thing that caught my, my, uh, uh, my ear when I was talking to Bob is uh, Bob was a professional ball player and he was in the farms of the, of the Pirates. Pittsburgh Pirates, yeah. Pittsburgh Pirates. Uh, they were called what? What was 1958. that? 1958. And they were called in the, 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 the farm uh, team? Well, I, uh, the Douglas Copper Kings, because I was in the farm system. Oh, OK. All right. Yeah. And, and I lasted for a little while. Right. They were called the Hollywood Stars or something like that? Well, the time? Hollywood Stars was the AAA team. Oh, OK. OK. And, and uh, where I was at was the C team. Okay. And uh, uh, you'd, uh, you'd have to experience the uh, stress and the uh, pressure you, of playing every day. Right, right. And having to perform. Right. You know. And I did okay, but I hurt my arm. And you, you were a pitcher. Pitcher and outfield. Outfield. Yeah. You were a good hitter, too. Yeah, well, that's why I was in the outfield. Yeah. <laughs> and I ended up in the outfield with the UFO thing, let me tell you. <laughs> okay, okay. So, so, so now, now you've, had, you've had these sort of, uh, well, they're not paranormal because it's, it's more with aliens, but you said very, something very interesting to me. You said, if you talk to people about UFOs or aliens, people will kind of, you know, be there in the fence, but if you say, do you believe in angels, they mostly will say yes. Well, yeah, and here's the interesting thing about that. Angel is Greek for messenger. So can you imagine if, if, if some of the scriptures that we read, mm -hmm. instead of saying so-and-so was approached by an angel, if they said so-and-so was approached by a messenger, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. changes the whole Right. Changes the whole picture, right, see? Right, right. And, uh, uh, yeah, I mean, I thought it was fascinating yes. that uh, these uh, celestials, I like to call them, mm -hmm. have been around for so long, mm -hmm, you mm -hmm, know? Mm -hmm. And they've also been uh, uh, propagating uh, huge movements on the planet. Mm -hmm, I mean, mm -hmm. if you look at the whole story with Muhammad, you know, mm -hmm. well, Gabriel appears to him, mm -hmm, you know, mm -hmm. and, and it changed the whole landscape mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah. eventually, yeah. It's very interesting when you're in the desert, I remember being in the Sahara and I was in, in this, 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 this deep safari in the Sahara and I remember this Palestinian man put that, the black and white thing around me, this old man came, oh, no, that's all wrong, come here, let me fix it for you, and he fixed it for me there. And I just walked through the desert for a bit where I could still see the, the Land Rovers far away. But it's just, it's just heaven and sand. It's like you have to meet God in the desert. I mean, Moses, Mohammed, uh, uh, Jesus. I mean, yeah. so many in this tranquility or in this quietness. Or even in Japan, when, when you go into uh, the spirituality of the Japanese, you know, they believe God is found in, in nature. Of it's course. not in the church or anything. It's in the forest, in the streams. It, it, this is where you communicate with the spiritual world. Yes, and you know, that's the whole thing that I've discovered after 40 years of being involved with this, mm -hmm. is that it's an inside job. It's all about perception. There's only one crisis that we have, and it's a crisis of perception. Mm -hmm. And so uh, uh, it, it's very interesting when you take uh, the language as it was spoken then mm -hmm. and use that. Mm -hmm. It, it paints a whole different picture mm -hmm. of what was going on in, uh, on, in the landscape. Mm -hmm. But, uh, you know, uh, in, in your uh, recent, well, for some people, but it, a lot of people have been doing this for a while, they're saying it's all about consciousness. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That consciousness is faster than the speed of light. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And... They say it's an inside job. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, and, uh, and it's like these guys, these celestials, are waiting for us mm -hmm. to wake up. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you know, and it's like, 
you know, when I think about it, I think, my God, you know, uh, we've got visitors either from another planet or another dimension. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And what's more important is how the Pittsburgh Steelers are going to do against the Colts. <laughs> Well, 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 going back to this point, going, going to this point, um, when we go to these places, like um, someone was talking about this, this temple in Bolivia, where, where the, the work on it, even machines today couldn't create those holes or, or, or those, those designs. It's just even machines today would struggle with that. And this is so old. And then it was destroyed. What destroyed it and all that. But, oh, you mean, yeah, I know. Yeah, what it's uh, Puma Puka. Uh, yes, that place. And, and yeah. that's amazing. Um, and the thing is, right now we've got access. If you watch Ancient Aliens, mm -hmm. uh, you can uh, watch tons Netflix of programs. Yeah, there are tons of programs. That, uh, like, uh, there's not too much that I can really say about it. That has Although, that what we did, what I did with a friend, is we went out and we looked for UFOs, instead of just reading about it okay. and wondering let's about go, it. Yeah, let's go look for the treasure. Mm -hmm. Yeah, man, so we would go out and we would lay down uh, on the beach or, or in a park, and for, but you have to be very patient. Mm -hmm. And yeah, and you have to be able to identify the difference between satellites and things that are moving in the sky like that, mm -hmm, you know. Mm -hmm. Well, satellites don't move like that. Mm -hmm. So we would chalk it up as, oh boy, you know, we had an experience. Right, right. Unfortunately, the only thing about it is, afterwards, we go, boy, did you see that? And da, 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 da. Now what? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. <laughs> now what do we do, right. you know? That's like the dog that catches the car. He goes chasing yes. after the car, and the car stops, and the dog says, Oh. Yeah, what's a dog going to do? Right, yeah. right. And, <laughs> yeah, yeah. And so, uh, and, and uh, uh, you know, the good news was that the Navy finally came out of the closet. The whole TikTok thing. Oh, man. Now, I believe, I believe that what's in those, those vessels, those things that are moving, are, there's no one in it. It's no different than us flying a helicopter Drones. in Mars. Oh, we're yeah. here, and we're flying a helicopter in Mars and watching it. Yeah. If they exist, you know, I always stay skeptical. They're flying these things and testing us while they're somewhere else, and they see the planes chasing it. Look, 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 he's chasing it. Turn it to the left, Johnny. Let's see what happens. <laughs> you know, yeah. it's like us with a remote control car in the park and a dog. You know, yeah. And we stop, and we go back, and the dog, you know, and they're watching our reaction. But, you know, that, that's... Why the defy, you know, defy yeah, physics? That's okay. one side of the picture. Mm -hmm. And then you've got the much more bizarre aspect, which is abductions. Right, right. That's uh, close encounters of the third kind or fourth kind. Yeah. And, uh, you know, uh, there are so many witnesses yeah. Yeah. that the government just couldn't right. hide it anymore. Right, right. Hey, and they I, can't hide it. I think it. that's what happened now, that they're more open about it, and they're starting to give. And that's just the U.S. Navy in yes. the U.S. You know what the cap, U.S. capital of the world is? Chile. Mm. Yes, I hear they it's have, very busy. With they have the, people, 70,000 people witnessing lights, and they, they're familiar with it. And also indigenous people. Right. They've accepted it for a long time. The Phoenix lights that flew over oh, Phoenix, yeah. you, any yeah. of you remember? It was shape of triangle. Everyone in the city saw it. Uh, they took their video cameras, amazing. CNN, you go to CNN archive and actually watch it. And you're there like, what in the world is that? It was enormous. Mm -hmm. it, it was in triangular shape and it just floated over Phoenix. And some people from the hills around used their cameras. Saw them, yeah. Yeah, and, and the thing is, uh, the, the governor also made fun of it. And that later, Larry King interviewed him, and he started crying because he, he realized that he was making fun of something that they, had no, they really had no answer about. And that's the, that's the problem, is, is that uh, the big problem is, who are they? What are they doing? You know, why are they here? Right. What's going on? Mm -hmm. And if, uh, you know, there's so many programs. Uh, what I like about the uh, 
ancient aliens is they take it back right. and they say, hey, this has been going on for a long right. time. Well, that, a long, long time. Th that's where it comes. What I really am sorry about is that I can't read the Bible in its original language. See, when I was in Egypt, an Egyptian right. once said to me, my friend, have you read the Quran? I said, yeah, yeah, I read it, I read it. He said, I read it in English. <laughs> yeah. And then he looked at me, my friend, you have not read the Quran. You know? <laughs> and so, because so much yeah. is used in translation. And now one of these Bibles that we have now that are in whatever English, British English, American English, New Translate, whatever, you know, if you could actually read the Aramaic, that's what I found amazing of the movie by uh, Mel Gibson of, of The Passion the of Christ, Aramaic. where they yeah. spoke Aramaic and they spoke, the Romans spoke Latin. I mean, it was amazing. And he also did that Apocalypto, where they were speaking yeah. Mayan. But if you could actually go and see those texts, that a lot of people don't, the words aren't clear and see what, what they were really saying. I think it would really give it a whole nother spin. Yeah, you know, yeah. and the thing, I know for me, the thing that drove me to uh, take a closer look at what was going on mm -hmm. was curiosity mm -hmm. and an open mind. Yes. And <clears throat> science has a tendency to close everything. Mm -hmm. Okay. Fear you know, also is another Well, thing. yeah, if you can't measure it, well, you know, how, yeah, you know, how do you measure a ghost? <laughs> you know, and you can talk to your grandmother or an uncle or something, mm -hmm. or you might experience an apparition yourself. Yeah, a lot of people have paranormal ex experiences. Yeah, and, and, and uh, uh, the government did such a great job with ridicule, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. that people were literally afraid to uh, share the information. Yeah, mm -hmm. man, to share the information about right. what they've seen and right, what's out right, there. Right. I can tell you, if you go out and you've got patience and you lay out and look up at the sky at night and stay there for a couple hours, you will discover some strange stuff going on. <laughs> <laughs> And, and this is very interesting. A friend of mine was at the uh, Aztec. It's a special place where the Aztec have these temples, and it transformed his life being there. But he said uh, they took him to a place where there were these like these dry spots, and he said, "Well, what are these? These were reflection ponds." And he said, "Oh, so they came here to meditate or think?" He said, "No, they were full of water, and it was still, and it would reflect the stars." They weren't looking at stars like this. They were looking at the stars at the and the reflection. And they yeah. can actually mark. They could put sticks in the, in the water. They can mark. That's how, they came. That's how the Mayas, Mayas made an, a perfect calendar, by looking at the reflection of the heavens in these giant ponds. They would all sit and see. And I found that so fascinating. And he said he broke down. That just did something well, to know, him. You look at the you Mayans, know. and the Mayans... They say, yeah, we come from the Pleiades. That's oh, yeah. where our ancestors yeah, come right, from. Right. Well, you know, it's like, how would you guys know about the Pleiades, <laughs> number one? Right. You know, without telescopes and so on and so forth. Right. But uh, they based their whole civilization on that. Mm -hmm. And their, their head guys supposedly were, were from the stars. They right, were. Right. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's the I'm same with the uh, Egyptians. Yeah, pyramids, pyramids, yeah. Incas, pyramids, Aztec, pyramids, Chinese, pyramids, Egyptians, pyramids, Mayans, pyramids. I mean, this pyramid shape in the ancient world, and they're all so different. And then they're so much the same. The same. And the yeah. parallels, how they And are. especially what they're built for. Mm -hmm. that's, the, that's the question. You had said, we're almost out of time, we have another minute, but you okay. said that St. Augustine was a very special city. Well, it where is. It's, where it's it linked. is. Uh, we're on the uh, uh, 30th parallel, which lines up, not quite 30, it's 29.64 yeah. or something, mm -hmm. and which lines up with the pyramids, Mount Sinai, and uh, 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 Tibet. Mm. The, uh, and, and, you know, uh, I don't, you know, I've, I've looked at ley lines and stuff like mm -hmm. that, 
And it's real interesting because uh, uh, the line that we're on is called by these ancient Samarians mm. a song line. Mm. And the song line is where the gods used to come in. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So we're right here. <laughs> and all you got to do is look up, guys. And also, St. John's River is one of the few rivers in the Run world backward. that goes north. Yeah, which is very interesting. Well, that we ran out of time with you, man. I could talk to you all night long. <laughs> you know, all night long. Thank you, Bob. Thank, Thank you. you. Bob. Thank you. And we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna bring Caribe Groove so, so you can go home with some music. Esta canción que sigue es muy especial para nosotros. Queremos cerrar este gran show para ustedes. Okay, this this last song we're playing is very special for us, and we want to close the show with this song. Es una canción que es la canción de los caminantes del mundo. This is the song of the walkers of the world. Y queremos que esta canción llegue a la pelusa en Italia que llegue por todas las fronteras de Latinoamérica. Muchas gracias.
we had our hiccups, I knew it, it's our first show, but uh, we get, just get better and better in our guests, and then at the end, at the last show, you all cry, oh, what am I gonna do Tuesday night? So, hope to see you again. Thank you, gang, thank you for your love, thank you for all your support, and I will see you next Tuesday. Abundantly, I walk to clear the negative, the air of mine, my lungs to breathe. The world may make no sense, at least I'm holding on, cause I belong to me. Cause I belong to me.